Today I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence and uh, how we can migrate results from labs into everyday life and work. I just joined uh, AI Lab of Lenovo as head of AI Lab and as vice president um, in the last month. Therefore, the, it's very important for me to share with you, uh, with you um, my uh, views of uh, how to migrate results from labs into everyday life and work. What is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence can enable people, uh, enable machine to behave like a human. In the science fiction, uh, we can even imagine that human can fall in love into robots and have emotions. And uh, in the everyday life, we know that machines like robots can run like a human and play chess or goes with human. AI technologies are very useful. I think many, most people use AI technologies uh, every day. AI can extend and enhance humans' perception and cognition. For example, search machine, Google, Baidu, these search machines can help us to access information in a very short time about the access knowledge um, very quickly. And uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, variable computing, with the augmented reality, we visit a street, or visit a new city, we can see which kind of uh, food behind the restaurant, behind the wall, even without to go inside, step inside. The third uh, useful point of AI is AI helps human and machine interaction. Many of us know Google Home, Amazon Echo, we can talk with them, ask them to wake up next morning and ask about weather. And also this kind of technology can be embedded in the smart home solutions. We can talk with our fridges, our TVs, and uh, even these machines can talk to each other. Artificial intelligence te techniques, components, and the products have started to be to penetrate all sectors of manufacture, service industry. Why now? Why AI is so hot, in particular in China? In the, la in the last few months, I read about AI everywhere in the technology reports and news. The considerable progress of AI are due to big data technologies, machine learning technologies, and the knowledge technologies, internet technology, hardware progresses. Deep learning, deep neural network, give a strong push to the considerable progress in AI. And don't forget the knowledge. Machine learning and the statistics can identify the patterns, but if we want to develop high quality and useful services products, Knowledges are very important to build vertical applications. And uh, now we can share, there are a lot of knowledge are open source. I can I just give you a few examples. Like Yago, we have 10 million of entities and 120 million facts. Wikipedia, you have a lot of entities about person, locations, organizations, companies, and this information are very useful to let us access uh, and understand the world. And parallel to Yahoo, the Wikipedia, we have also Freebase, Wikidata, and uh, Google has contributed a lot of um, structured knowledge and shared knowledge with the communities. Superhuman. Why AI is so hard? Because we met several so that machine can even have superhuman performance. For example, Deep Blue, IBM Watson, machine can give better answers to questions. I thought though, machine 
one against the low master and uh, the driverless cars will be the next important contributing in the human technology evolution. And uh, let me share with you the components of human intelligence and the what are the intelligence of machine and computer. If we compare human intelligence with uh, computer and with machine, let's look at it. Statistic learning behavior, machine has a very strong statistic learning behavior, sometimes much better than human. And uh, machine can access large reusable knowledge and build large reusable knowledge. Um, also has influence capabilities and can acquire knowledge automatically. However, humans should not be scared of machine because machine, in comparison to machine to human, machine can do little planning, has limited intentions, and uh, if we talk about self-consciousness, analogy reasoning sentiments, emotions, and creativities, humans are very strong in these areas. However, machines can help us. Therefore, AI can do what humans cannot do. AI extends human cognition, like perceptions, interpreted sensor input for vision, hearing, feeling. With AI technologies, we can hear people talking in another country in the same time and we can see what's behind us and we can observe the world, monitor the data, all of the world and we can we have immediate access to all knowledge in the world with the help of this, all these open knowledges. Also for understanding, um, machines can analyze millions of data in real time with the big data analytic technologies. Machine can learn patterns from experience like AlphaGo and uh, robot, robots and automated system can produce large amount of products in short time and uh, without humans. The advances in AI research enable a large variety of new products, services and business models and they also offer numerous opportunities for the considerable improvement of existing ones, like smart home solutions, different smart assistants, robots, service robot, entertainment robot, robots take care of children, robots take care of senior people, robot and smart assistant tell you which kind of weather and play music. All these are the big progresses in the last few years. Let's look at AI technology areas. I just simplify them. And these are the key areas like computer vision, perception, speech technologies, text analytics, machine translation. I put machine translation into this area, dialect, dialogue technologies, natural language, generation, knowledge representation, deep analytics, influencing, planning, robotics, educational technologies, machine learning, all these te AI technologies should come with big data technology and Internet of Things technology. If AI technologies will only be useful, it can embed in some applications. If we look at application areas by sectors in the horizon uh, and on the top of the horizon, I listed some relevant sectors like manufacturing, banking and financial services, telecom internet, transportation, logistics, defense, security, healthcare, real estate, facility management, mining, agriculture, trade and retail, education, media entertainment, construction, fishing, forest, public administration, tourism, all these sectors can use AI technologies. If we 
put these kind of sectors together with AI technologies, in addition to big data technologies and Internet of Things technology, we will have 216 areas. Each company should look at um, their tasks and application areas and see which kind of AI technologies and useful, how they can enrich and upgrade their services, products with AI technologies. Now, let, give, uh, let, uh, let me give you some uh, examples, also my interpretations of the current progresses in conversational user interface and dialogue system. If you look at uh, smart assistant today, like uh, Siri and uh, Google Home and uh, uh, Amazon Echo, the communication channel is voice. And uh, this kind of assistant give you on the one hand information like weather, news, you can ask questions, who is the wife of uh, Obama, President Obama, or give them actions like wake up, play music. But if you look at the current conversational assistance and uh, consider uh, their te the technologies, let's look at the three parameters. The, the initiatives, the current uh, uh, initiative is still started from user. User asks for information. User ask for um, actions, and the system is uh, still very passive. A real dialogue system, um, the system can ask uh, clarification questions and can even propose some questions or the actions. And uh, the current smart assistants use sound as major communication medium, and uh, in many cases. Text, pitch, and even touch are useful modality and medium. For example, if you want to know want to know the pictures uh, what you have taken uh, in baking, voice will not be the right channel. And uh, if you look at uh, current uh, smart assistant technologies. The depth of the dialogue is still very shallow. Um, most of these kind of uh, smart assistants behave like a search machine of just question answering, command driven, and the real dialogue system is, we're still waiting for the real dialogue system. But we are happy with the current progresses. Let me show you a, a, a near future potential product. Um, like, please show me pictures of Peter, Peter in Beijing. And if you ask this kind of uh, actions from machine, you need not only voice channel, also some display. And your AI technologies should, on the one hand, understand this sentence. This is an uh, action display pictures. Also, um, did analytics is uh, relation extraction because it's about person Peter and his pictures located in Beijing. And uh, in addition to natural lang language understanding technologies, you need also image retrieval technologies. This is a simple, simplified architecture of uh, dialogue system. Now I want to also give you a brief uh, um, description of big data technologies. The big data, no, uh, big, there are three uh, uh, important features of big data. The volume and uh, the speed of the uh, velocity, the speed of the uh, change, and the data source. And since we have now very powerful big data platform like Apache, uh, Spark, um, Flink, and Strong, the volume is not uh, a big challenge anymore. The challenge is the velocity, the high speed, and the variety. Because the, uh, if you the same technology for the news cannot easily be used for clinical data or used for uh, social media data. 
and uh, how can you process the real-time data and give the real-time response. These are the challenges of the three. The, I think velocity and the veracity are even more challenging. And among the big data, the unstructured data will be more and more important. Um, when um, technology reports, see, in the coming years, more than 70% of the data will be unstructured. And text is one of the major resources of big data. And uh, chapter data belongs to unstructured data and uh, analytics. Even an unstructured text analytics system should be able to automatically recognize and extract relations about relevant entities or concepts that are relevant salient to the user's needs. For example, we have a lot of text. We want to build a Nobel Prize winner database. Linguistic patterns like a prize was awarded to a person, person won a prize in a year, are good indicators to know subject is a prize, object is a person, or subject is person, object is prize, and in which year. And the linguistic information are indicators of the structures of the semantic information embedded in the unstructured text. For the textual analytics, there are, I show you three general applications tasks. One is natural language understanding, text analytics, help user to access for information finder. Mapping unstructured textual un uh, queries of users to more structured formal query for search and uh, answer changes. Like, for example, where's in New York? This is a very simple question. Every person can understand it, but the machine should know New York. The last two tokens is about a city name, and the where is a question word about the locations. And uh, a smart answer of this question will be not a text, but a map. With the map, you can easily find the location of, the, of New York. And, uh, but in Chinese, uh, for the Chinese language, New York is the, in the, New York is in the, uh, not the, uh, in the beginning of the sentence. And the, the question phrase, where is on the end of the sentence. Therefore, if we build natural language and understanding question answering system, uh, for many languages, we need to adapt our technologies from one language to another because of the different word orders, different uh, linguistic requirements. The, the, the second general application task is information acquisition for information provider. Extract structured information from big amount of free text to construct knowledge bases. And the, for business intelligence, if, for example, you want to know your, the customers think about your products and uh, you have to extract the information about the product names, the brand, and uh, the relevant features of product, and you have to know which kind of customers, where does this customer is uh, located in, and uh, which kind of, uh, whether his, which kind of feature of the product this person is happy or not. And uh, this is an example of uh, um, one of the, our, uh, uh, my previous project. We extract a social network of pop stars from web. This is an example of uh, Madonna and uh, the first layer social network. Uh, her parents, her children, her um, boyfriend, and, and and husband. It's so interesting. It turned out the pop stars in US, uh, most of them are related in Web3. The third general application is the big data analytics. Given the structured data, and uh, given the data, uh, unstructured data and structured data, with the uh, natural language understanding or AI technologies, we can link them together Based on the linked information, we can do large-scale information monitoring. And uh, 
analytics of areas, markets, and trends, and uh, scanning for relevant new technology new developments. This is a uh, big data, a big text analytics streaming architecture developed in my previous group, and you can see Kafka to acquire real-time info crowd information from social media, from news, and from um, SS feeds real-time. And the, the, we embedded our big text analytic pipeline in the Apache Flink, um, that, like we did tokenization and uh, word segmentation, entity discovery, and entity recognition, like, and uh, um, identify person, location, city, railway uh, station stops, and link them to the real world knowledge. Link the structured data with unstructured data and uh, extract in relations with among them. For example, we extract events like a uh, uh, delay of uh, traffic, uh, of a uh, real uh, uh, delay of some uh, bus or delay of some trains delay of uh, airplanes or accident on some uh, highway or one company bought a company acquisition all this information we can extract from the um, real time and give this information companies can apply them to supply chain management um, build a better logistic systems and uh, with uh, solar index we uh, we can ser search this information quickly. And the knowledge graph information, the extract information can integrate and merge with the existing knowledge graphs. Now I want to um, inform and tell you some of my past big smart data projects. Um, like uh, there are a lot of activities happened in Germany uh, with big data and smart smart data project, like a big Berlin Big Data Competence Center, they are working on um, integrating AI technologies into big data analytic platforms for vision, for texture analytics, and for uh, materials technologies. And uh, in order to make this information not technology and uh, also um, accessible to Enterprises, the German Ministry of Economics and Energy opened a smart data forum. In this forum, companies can inform what happened, the newest technologies. And uh, I was also, before I joined Lenovo, I was involved in three big uh, smart data, big data projects. One is to apply big data analytics semantic web technology to industry for zero for supply chain management and market research. The second second project is apply of big data technology to mobility. The third one is the most challenging one, apply text analytic technologies for clinical text. This is the most challenging one and the most interesting one. Now I want to summarize my presentation. AI technologies can contribute to perception, interpret sensor input for vision, hearing, feeling, can help us observe our world, monitoring data and the internet, and the immediate access to all knowledge in the world, analyzing millions of data in real time, and the learning from experience, and with robot we can product, uh, to organize our, our production and uh, uh, work in better way.